Okay, so I have talked about early warning systems on many occasions and I'm a big fan of them because they are not just about saving lives but this is also actually one of the best adaptation tools. Adaptation to climate change impacts comes down to you know multiple time scales. The short day-to-day -day, you know season to season crisis management is an important thing and then you need decadal strategies, policies, resilience building and so on and you want to have an eye on the horizon to see where things are headed in terms of temperature, precipitation, humidity, health, energy requirements, energy sources and so on and so forth. So this is a nice report by the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction Early Warnings for All, which we'll read a little bit about, and of course the World Meteorological Organization, which tracks the status of uh, early warning systems. This is Global Status of Multi-Hazard Early Warning Systems 2023. Uh, I will update every year, if possible, on what new things uh, are being done. But here we'll just want go through these to look at some of the foundational efforts and the principles and uh, recommendations and so on. So obviously it's a big report and I'm going to be very brief again even though it will be a few uh, podcasts. Executive summary, the impact of disasters continues to increase at a rapid rate fueled by climate emergency. You have to be careful about these words but nonetheless climate crisis, climate emergency and all these sorts of words are used not always uh, anyway multi-hazard early warning systems MHEWS or we can call them MUSE are a proven measure to reduce disaster risk and adapt to climate to a changing climate as a result they can save lives while averting and minimizing losses and damages MHEWS MUSE provide a tenfold return on investment and this report further highlights that countries with low MUSE coverage have nearly a six times higher disaster mortality rate and five times more disaster affected people when compared with countries with high MUSE coverage. So I'm going to just use MUSE MHEWS multi-hazard early warning systems so just get used to it because I, I don't want to keep saying a MHEWS every time just say MUSE right. What is the challenge? Uh, w only half of the world, so 52% is covered by an early warning system. Uh, this translates to 101 countries, which is an increase of six countries from last year. So progress is being made, but if you look at uh, least low income countries and least developed countries and small island developing states and so on, there is where that's where the numbers are low and they are generally also highly vulnerable. So you want to focus on those sorts of things. Early warning systems exist uh, even where early warning systems exist uneven progress is seen across the MUSE pillars. So what are the pillars? Disaster risk knowledge, observations and forecasting, dissemination and communication and preparedness to respond. Just having early warnings is not very useful unless you have prepared the system to respond to these early warning systems, early warnings, and the system has monitoring observations, networks for forecasting, getting it from uh, uh, somewhere or producing it yourselves, and have a network for dissemination and communication of the early warnings as well. Then there is the early, uh, vulnerability part where people receiving it must be able to interpret uh, and act on the early warnings. The increasing unpredictability, complexity and severity of hazardous events are challenging the MUSE capability. Limited risk knowledge as the first MUSE pillar hampers early warning effectiveness which is further aggravated by gaps in global basic observation uh, network GBON across much of the African continent and parts of the Pacific oops, and uh, Latin America. So essentially main thing to remember is that the entire system the globe is only as resilient and as uh, vulnerable as the most vulnerable and the least resilient country so weather hazard uh, climate impacts in one place affect the entire world now so 
typhoon that hits t uh, Taiwan uh, or Philippines can cascade into the global network of global markets and uh, you know connected economies in many ways that we don't even know or can't even anticipate every time okay so despite advances in technology especially connectivity some communities remain hard to reach and support so obviously intensive actions are needed as you can see I'm skipping a lot of the text and reading just the highlighted parts because this is a nice report if you're interested in it you must go back and read it it's available online but I'm going to be brief because I just want to expose the most salient points and that's a subjective choice so you want to follow up so what are the progress and highlights that the report uh, includes several initiatives on MUSE are underway to scale up early warning uh, coverage and close the early warning early action gap advances in science and technology together with the increase in the availability of observational data have led to improvements in forecasts especially at longer lead times so the implementation of the common alerting protocol cap common alerting protocol has helped the timely flow of information from authoritative sources to the public across multiple channels by the way this report has some three pages of acronyms so I'm going to run into trouble uh, with the acronyms but I will look them up as we get stuck okay the report highlights the need for o an overall risk governance approach to MUSE so you know the need for an overall risk governance approach it's not just you know you need hyper local information on risks vulnerability exposure hazards but you also want to have a global map so that you know how the uh, com uh, economies are going to be vulnerable on a on the whole how the you know supply chains may be affected by impacts in one place or how high risk in one place needs to be uh, you know dealt with to protect everybody and so on and so forth so an incredibly connected global system now increasing international cooperation in MUSE is enabling countries with lower capacity to generate reliable forecasts which they can then tailor to reflect local context and local needs so many countries like India offer uh, help and forecasts and training for neighboring countries and this is very useful because India itself will be vulnerable if the countries around are impacted Pakistan Bangladesh Nepal Bhutan Myanmar you know anything that happens in the neighborhood Sri Lanka that's going to be the vulnerability of India also let's look at outlook and opportunities this is all executive summary we'll add some details as we go along the launch of the early warning systems for all EW for all, EW for all initiative with its vision to protect every human on earth is an early warning system uh, that has accelerated the momentum on MUSE to realize this ambitious vision there is a clear need to scale up the level of investments in MUSE so what do we mean by that World Bank may help developing countries or developing countries like India may help their neighbors and of course rich countries are supposed to do more on uh, loss and damage climate finance and so on but that's a long and different discussion the data ecosystem underlying MUSE should be strengthened and expanded while strengthening the technology technological base for MUSE is important no tech and low-tech solutions can also be considered because you don't always have the finance or the even energy needed power electricity and so on to install some of the high-tech uh, instruments and uh, technological uh, you know cap infrastructure but if you can manage with no tech and low tech then lives can still be saved the ever increasing magnitude and impact of the climate emergency calls for greatly upscaling adaptation and disaster risk reduction efforts a lot of this we'll look at in terms of the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction and there are lots of case studies in the report of countries that are doing well uh, and countries that need to do much better and so I won't go into all those sorts of details okay uh, so let's leave this executive summary podcast here and we'll come back and look at each chapter and make a few points from uh, each chapter but again this is on 
the stat kind of a status report on multi-hazard early warning systems or what I will call MUSE throughout and it's from UNDRR and early warnings for all and WMO it's a annual report but I'm using the one from the most recent one to set the base uh, and if in the coming years I find some new exciting developments I will add you know supplemental material to these podcasts which is in, uh, easy enough to do and uh, reflect it on YouTube the report is very good lots of details lots of case studies lots of references and you want to read the report if you are interested I'm being brief but I do uh, use it for various other articles I write or talks I give and the advice I give to you know the government agencies that ask for it and so on so very useful we'll come back and continue this should be three or four podcasts at least so uh, see you in the next podcast on the progress on Muse.